Hey everybody, so this is a continuation of my previous video in which I showcase how to mount a NAS volume into a Docker container. In this video, I just show you how to mount a USB device to your Raspberry Pi and add it to a Docker container. So go ahead and plug your USB. The reason I had to do this is because I completely like mismanaged the way I recorded the video. Initially, it was going to be one big video with NAS and USB, but then I realized a lot of people may not care about NAS if they only want to mount a USB and vice versa. So this is why I split the video into two and it may feel a little disjointed, but all you need to know is that this is a continuation of the previous video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. It helps move the channel in a positive direction. All right, let's get back into the video. Hey everybody, so now we're going to be doing the USB method. Basically, we're going to connect a USB drive to the Raspberry Pi. Then we're just going to mount it to the Raspberry Pi if it's compatible with a Linux system. Okay, so let's go to the terminal of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, once we're here, let's just use the utility fdisk to list all of the disks. So sudo fdisk-l. Okay, so this will basically tell you all of the block devices, RAM, blocks, whatever. All we need to do is scroll down here to the dev SDA portion and find your disk. I plugged a 480 gigabyte disk. It's an SSD connected via USB 3.0 adapter. Now this is critical, right? The format of the disk, the file system of the disk has to be compatible with Linux. This disk that I'm already using has been formatted in a Linux compatible file system. If for some reason this is showing something that doesn't say Linux file system, then you will need to change it. You will need to use this command, sudo uh, makefs ext4, and then you need to tell it which of the devices you wanna make into an ext4. In this case, we're gonna be using this, dev, SDA four. Now be warned, this will take a long time. This can take hours potentially. So let's, since I already have it as a Linux system, let's just skip this step altogether. Now it is possible that maybe the Raspberry Pi automatically mounted the disc. You see, this is where you might want to use a NAS operating system because it will allow you to do all of this in a very simple manner. Okay. But because we don't have that luxury at the moment, even though it is coming, my next couple of videos, I'm going to be showcasing NAS operating system on the Raspberry Pi because of this, because I already got my Raspberry Pi 5 with an NVMe SSD and I want to test it out to the limits. Okay, now that we're here, let's check the media directory. You see, a lot of the times when the, U when the Raspberry Pi automatically mounts a USB, it lives in the media directory. So let's CD media. Let's do ls and there are no directories. Therefore, the, the USB device is not mounted. In order to mount it, let's just make a directory here. Call it, um, let's just call it like jelly, like jellyfin. No, hmm. let's just call it like SSD. Okay, so SSD. Okay, so we need a sudo and then sudo make their SSD. Okay, now that we are in the media folder and we do ls, you should be able to see this SSD. And now all we need to do is mount the USB device to the SSD, right? You're going to need to do sudo mount. The mount command is important here. And then we need to tell it which disk we're going to be mounting. In this case, we're going to be mounting the dev SDA4. Then the location where it's going to be mounted. In this case, it's going to be media SSD. Now you will need to do some options in order for you to edit and write, read and write from it. In this case, we're going to be passing the UEID of code fallacy and the GID of code fallacy as well. This will allow us to read and write from the disk. Okay. All right. So now that has been mounted. Let's do LS. Let's, as you can see, the SSD is now green. Let's CD into the SSD. And because the disk is empty, we have no files. But if we do touch 
test.sh, you can see that we are able to create directories in there. If we do df-h, it will tell us like the amount of storage available to the Raspberry Pi. And you can see the dev SDA4 has 446 gigabytes remaining and is mounted to the media SSD path. Okay, now that we have this, we can do the, we can basically just add movies to the disc and play it from here. In this case, we don't have any media, right? But let's just do a hypothetical. Let's just make the directory jellyfin. Let's see the into jellyfin. And then in here, let's make uh, a directory for movies. Uh, let's do TV shows. And then whenever we need to add movies, we're going to be adding it to this directory and TV shows. Let's open FileZilla. Let's connect to our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so we are connected. Let's go to, let's go find a movie and then let's just pass that. Okay, so I didn't have any media because I had removed the, uh, the files that I thought I wanted to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass a TV show. So I have a couple of episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog and we're going to be passing it from this computer through FileZilla to the external storage device on the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's go here to downloads and curse the cowardly dog. Now here we will need to go to media, not home, because we're trying to use the USB flash drive. And then in here, there it is, the SSD, basically what we mounted. Here's Jellyfin, and then here's TV shows, and we're gonna drop uh, cower uh, courage the cowardly dog inside of here. And right now it is transferring. And while that's transferring, we can go ahead and edit the, uh, Docker compose of the jellyfin so that it now takes this path. So if we CD, if we go back home first, you know, CD, uh, squiggly line, it will take you home. Uh, then in here, let's CD into jellyfin. Let's do Docker compose down so that we can take down the container before we make changes to it. Okay. Jellyfin is being stopped. Let's nano Docker compose YAML. Then in here, let's go down here. Let's comment out the PyNAS, which is the previous method that we tried. And all we're going to be doing is just passing the TV shows directory. So let's uncomment this one. And now instead of home code fallacy TV shows, we just need to add the path of the disk that we mounted, which is in this case is uh, media, SSD, jellyfin, and then TV shows. Uh, let me just control O, enter, control X, and now Docker compose up, dash D for detach mode and it's going to start the container. So let's go back to the jellyfin. And then uh, we don't have access to any of this because we commented out, this is this has just has been cached. So let's go to the dashboard, the admin dashboard. Let's go to libraries, right? Let's remove this since we're no longer mounting the NAS that has all of the movies. Yes, delete. And then in here, let's just go ahead and mount uh, TV shows. And now let's select the shows right here. This is the only one that we mounted. So it is already showing up and look, courage, the cowardly dog. Let's just do. Okay. Let's just do. Okay. Let's make sure enable chapter images and extraction and okay. It's going to take a second. And now we have the TV shows library. Okay. So if we go back to the home, you can now see Courage the Cowardly Dog. It is loading because it is scanning the media, but it is there. If we give it a minute or two, you will see more shows. Look, it's downloading the metadata. If we click on it, you can see there's a couple of seasons. I only have two seasons. So if we click on this, 
you can see that we successfully mounted a USB device and we're now reading media from it from Jellyfin. I know this was a really, really, really advanced topic and I'm sorry about that. This is why I am now going to be showing you how to uh, use a NAS operating system that will take care of a lot of these little things through a user interface. So please stick around for it and I'm really excited to what's to come.